Hello, welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno as we attend the UK premiere of Come Down, where the fun part's getting high, but the Come Down is a killer. I thought this place was derelict. Let's get this party started. Yes, yes, you're locked in and locked on to the Locks FM. My part, I am a bit of a bully, yeah. Um, he's a bit of a nutcase. He's a. Yeah, a lot of shouting, a lot of him going mad. But I love them characters, you know. I, I kind of, it's always good to go back to kind of Jay from Kid Oldwood a little bit. And and yeah, I think it's Jay from Kid Oldwood on a lot of drugs, to be honest. We were talking about Kid Oldwood, you're, you're yeah. working back with Minaj. What was that experience like? Because you've obviously both developed as well as, as, as creative forces. Yeah. Right, it's always great working with Hood, you know. It's like my first, third film, sorry, working with him. And I think there's just a lot of confidence there, you know. He's one of them directors that let you kind of do your thing and he will only come up to you if he really feels there's a problem so yeah no, no i've got a lot of confidence with hoods and i think he has a lot of confidence in me and it's always great to work with him yeah and we're working in a genre film as well horror what yeah. was that like sort of dipping your toe in into that and yeah. uh, and, and in, an, in an urban environment yeah. do you know what it is i like i've always wanted to do more you know i had done a film way back called wilderness and then um dead set on tv and i've always wanted to reach out and do a bit more horror and so yeah, this was a film that was floating around for a while and you know, once I knew that Hoods was on it and it just felt like a really nice change to where I was after another Hood and you know, we, we filmed it like a year and a half ago so it was like, it was just really nice for the time it was, yeah. Uh, and it's quite brutal what happens to you, can I yeah. say that? I mean, what yeah, was that no. like working with, with in, in that sort of scenario really? Uh, you know, it was amazing, like it was such a good, I don't know if I can say this, but it was a good death scene and it attracted me to the film, man. Um, you know, I was in pr prosthetics for like hours while they done my whole face up and no, it was good. It was really good. What was that like working with prosthetics? Because for a lot of actors that, you know, it's not something that they necessarily think about when they take on the role, but actually when they're sat in the seat and it's being applied, it's actually yeah. a bit of a horror in itself. Yeah, I don't think I've ever sat still for that long, like ever. I just had to, you know, you just sit there and you just let them do their work and yeah, no, it was, it was good. <laughs> Very exciting script to be a part of. Tell me how you got involved with it. Well, I was approached by Dom, the, the producer, and uh, it was quite, quite a, a couple of years after I'd finished Kid Hood, and I was being sent a lot of these urban scripts, uh, like for gritty dramas, but then I saw this one and I was just like, this is great, this is so much, like, it comes in, in in one shape and then very quickly takes a turn and becomes something completely different. And it, because it's a genre film, I was really excited to get into that, yeah. It's interesting that you mention about genre film because it's a horror that we've got here. So what was that like for you shooting at a horror film, logistically for you to shoot? Yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting challenge. I mean, it was, uh, you know, I, I didn't uh, think that I was a big fan of horror films, but when I started researching the films that uh, I wanted to reference for this film, I suddenly realized that actually in my youth I'd spent a lot of time watching John Carpenter films, which I really loved. So I, I tried to bring that kind of sensibility from the sort of 70s horror films into this rather than go for the more um, running around ha with a handheld camera type horrors, which is what we've become accustomed to made it a little more, more slick and stylish. Really. Yeah, absolutely. I think it gives it a bit more scale, a bit more production value in that way. Is it difficult for you as a director to, to build up the tension to what is going to make audiences scared? Are you always conscious about that? Um, well, I think a lot of that comes from the script. So you find the, the moments in the script that you feel you can extract into that into um, those moments and then it's really about making sure you've got the footage and then the rest of it you just put together in the edit and seeing how long it takes to make something work and you know trying out different things and um, uh, you know in the end we've only got a certain number of characters which means only a certain number of deaths <laughs> in the end and um, so in that sense you know, we, we've had to extend some of these scenes to, to make make the uh, tension last longer, but it w definitely works. Yeah, it's good. It, it was the, the interesting thing as well with how, getting how all these characters work together as well, um, because they start off a, as friends. So, is it interesting for you to see how under put under duress like they are, how these 
band of people actually work or not work together? Uh, yeah, the relationship? In, in, well, I, I, the thing is, like when you read, when I read the script, um, and then when we cast it, and, and uh, it, you know, it's very obvious that there was two sides to these kids and the friendship, in the sense that actually a lot of the time you're looking at them and, and they annoy the hell out of you and so when they start getting killed off you, you still start enjoying it you're like yeah so it's kind of like well which side are you on are you on the kid side or are you on the tenant side so that came across quite quite well i thought it was quite entertaining there's someone up here what's going down Oh, Jacob, you, your character is, is the most sympathetic character in the film. I, am I right in saying that? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. That's really nice that you said that. Well, it's, it's true. I mean, this, this guy, he's just come out of prison. Yeah. And uh, he wants to do good, doesn't he? Yeah, he and just wants to live a peaceful life, I think. And uh, what attracted you to the, the part when, when you first read the script? What was it about, Jacob? I think kind of what you said about he's a sympathetic character. I think that he wants the best for himself and for his girlfriend and for his child that's coming coming soon. His child's not a film. It's coming. His child um, and uh, the impending birth. The impending birth. That sounds really ominous, but yeah, the impending birth. And I think uh, I, I like that. I like that there was a chance, an opportunity to to not just have a character that can be seen as a bit of trouble, you know, someone who, who's got a bit more going on. There is actually, you can, you can see kind of like this inner strength within him, can't you? And uh, as, the, as the course of the film goes, we can, we can see that, can't we? That's in as well the strength of the script, I would have thought. Was the yeah, had. yeah, they, I mean, all of them really go through it in this film. It's an interesting dynamic between the, the guys as friends, aren't they, as well? Because um, how closely did you all work together in the beginning to kind of build that relationship, really? Um, we did, I think we did about like, like a week of rehearsing and um, a few of us knew each other before. I've worked with Adam like five times now, I think, which is a pleasure, obviously. Um, so that was really nice. It was nice as well to, for me and Adam to have like a new dynamic and new characters to muck about with and um, yeah it was really nice we had a week and we all got to know each other and and work out what we we're doing. And you're working on a, a horror film mm -hmm. so what, what's that whole experience like is it is it different compared to the other films that you've shot before? Yeah yeah it was a new experience I liked it it was it was a uh, we all kind of got stuck in with it and it was nice sweating for six weeks and running around like a dank, dark, sweaty corridor for, yeah, for that time. There is quite a physical uh, expectation of you guys in this film, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. I thought this was like my opportunity to be like an action star. This is like the, the most opportunity I'm ever going to get because I'm like, I'm like a stick. But no one knows this place better than us. Two stairwells, one lift, and that's the only way done. I'm very well, thank Good. you. How are you? More very important. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm UK great. UK premiere. It is the UK premiere and released March 11th. Multi-platform everywhere nationwide. Is it well for you're, you're the producer of the film? What, how, what attracted you to become involved in it? Um, I think really what happened is that we, we, the writer of the film, Steve Kendall, had written a script that I thought was quite unique and we hadn't really seen it. There was kind of these urban environment, urban characters, and they were kind of all of a sudden put in a place where they weren't the big guys, they weren't in control. And then I figured that if I get Hoods to do it, obviously did Kiddlehood, and then we mix it up, it, it just seemed to work, you know? So we got some characters who you wouldn't really be that sympathetic to, suddenly in a situation where you're starting to think you want them to get out alive. So that's kind of what happened. And, and as a producer, you know, are you gonna be sort of mindful as well of the, of the commerciality of, of the product that you're producing, really? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think these kind of films, there's a big market for them. The problem you always have with smaller films is against the, the box offices. You've got like Avengers coming out or, you know, how people put them into cinemas. And I think, you know, this film's being uh, released cinematic on a very limited release. But a lot of people are going to go and see it um, from the VOD, DVD, Blu-ray. And, and that's kind of a lot what our audience for this film are going to be watching it on anyway. So. 
And, and working with, with the cast, what, what was that like? Did you get involved yourself with the casting process? Because yeah, they're we, a really strong we cast. Did. Yeah, we were very involved with it and we went to a lot of people to get the guys that we ended up with. I think we saw probably about 100 people um, for each of the roles, or for all of the roles altogether. But the, the key thing was that we'd kind of gone through lots of different scenarios and, and it just turned out really well having Jacob and Adam as the two leads against each other. Um, but as an ensemble, I think they all really work well together, and they're all they're all doing exceptionally well in their own in their own way. I mean, Jessica's doing really well, Sophie's doing really well, um, and I think as a collective, they're really strong and they're very believable. Like when you see them together, you actually believe that they could be friends. So that's good. And, and logistically, what was this film like to make? Because it, it's set predominantly in a tower block, yeah. but there are so many different um, areas within that tower block that get investigated, so to speak. So how was that logistically to shoot? Was it complex? It was, and we, the big problem we had was that you'd expect when you're shooting in the East End that you'd find some tower blocks to shoot in. And the problem is that everybody, uh, well, everybody wanted to shoot uh, because the Olympics had been cleaned up. So they'd put these kind of like fake colors and boards on front of all these old blocks. So every block we went to, it's like, it's too clean, it's too clean. So what we decided is we shot all of the interiors in a, a studio, we built a big set, um, and then we also shot in a, a building where we cheated stuff for the stairwells, and then we created a tower block of our own. So we went to the ugliest tower blocks we could find. But the Olympics caused us a lot of problems, and they caused a lot of problems in the studio too, because they were rehearsing next door, the opening ceremony. So that wasn't great either, but it's very much set in the East End. It's very much shot in the East End, and it's great that we're doing a, a screening premiere exclusive here in the East End. So.